Hello YouTube, thou art once again guilty of not visiting thee for too long. Um, again, work has been crazy and I will be showing a video of what I've been doing fairly soon. But first, a lot of people have asked for more C++ and I do do some still now and again, but I really have very little time. Um, for example, tonight, what, why am I looking at the clock there? I have a computer. Okay, I've been coding for like 15 minutes tonight and it's already getting late and I don't have much time. So that's the problem now. For people who are being naughty and looking at my screen, you will notice I'm programming asteroids. Now I've done this before in Java and I think I've probably done it in C++ before, but anyway, this is my program in Java. I'll just go ahead and run it. I've probably shown it on YouTube, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, here you go. Um, obviously, it's not very much like the original asteroids. For one, you can go backwards. Um, the shots are a lot faster and you have an infinite number. And you'll notice the asteroids are actually images. Those are actual images on a sprite somewhere. I don't want to find them. But despite all this, it's actually quite addictive. I found it to be a really addictive game. It's one of my favorite um, retro games. It needs the sound effects, of course, and this doesn't have it, so that's a big flaw. But um, anyway, recently I went to a retro gaming exhibit, kind of, but they had lots of arcade machines, and one of the arcade machines they had was Asteroids from 1979, if my memory's correct. And one of the things I thought was really cool about it is it was on an old CRT vector display, and I had no idea how insanely bright those are. Seriously, when you shot just a shot, first of all, it was really loud because the arcade machine had massive speakers, so it all vibrated, which was cool, but the actual bullet was so bright, it felt like someone was shining a laser in your eyes. It was really cool. I, I was just standing. The asteroids were killing me constantly. I was just sitting still, just firing one shot at a time, trying to look at the shot working out what it was, and of course it was just the um, vector display they have. It was super, super bright. Uh, anyway, that inspired me to think, hmm, Asteroids is kind of cool. I might have some free time, so I decided to go ahead and make Asteroids again. Now, I've not finished it, and this is not a how-to video. The reason is, I'm trying this in a very different way to normal. I'm using a component entity system from scratch, and I've never done it and it's turning out a bit weird and if I tried to make a how-to video for this like as I was doing it for the first time um, there'd be about five minutes maybe of good content and then 55 minutes of me going that doesn't work quite so anyway yeah I decided not to do that and I think I might just make little videos of where it's at and code little bits for you now so anyway transitioning to C++ um, we are in Maine that's a good place I'll show you what I've got so far do, 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 do. Come on. Excellent. Uh, I'm gonna... Oh, crap. Uh, I do actually have a player ship. It's not showing up. I'm not finished the collisions yet. Hang on. Um, there we go. Um, all this code here is related to the ship colliding with asteroids, and I basically hacked that together last night, so it's very nasty. And it needs to be put into... Somewhere else, it needs to be put in the scene. It shouldn't be handled outside of the scene here. So anyway, we've got uh, this line of code. So it's still going to detect collisions. I'm just going to stop it from removing the player ship whenever it does. Build, my pretty build. Okay, so we start with our debugging again. And there we've got our ship. Now, obviously, you'll notice some differences. Um, first one, there aren't any images here. Everything is made up of lines. So each object, in fact... Okay, let's go to my components, because it's a component entity system, we have components. So a physical component, and this is biting me in the ass actually, I decided early on that all physical components would have a list of vertices, and from that we would draw the lines. Very straightforward. This is going to be a problem when I add shots to the game, because although I can represent a shot as four lines with only one, like just one by one lines, that's a bit annoying, and really I do just want a dot, a pixel. So I'm wondering if I should have a special case for when there's only one vertice. I think that might be the easy way of solving it. Um, but it's just, I'm trying to keep it all really... I don't know what the word is. Flexible? Not nice. Nice is a good word, because I hack things far too much. Um, as you will see in the game I've been programming at work for the last six months, probably. Although I can't show you the code for that, but I will be able to show you the actual game probably in a week or two, if I have time to record. 
Honestly, today was crazy. We released part of this game today, and it was like instantly a million bugs. So I got destroyed. Anyway, off topic. Where am I? I'm in the physics component. Um, yeah, so we've got all these components, and they go into the scene object. So a scene object has an input component, or it can. These are optional. All of them are optional. A physical component and a drawable component. Now, these are a bit more interconnected than I would like. And of course, there's an obvious limitation at the moment of you can only have one drawable object per scene, object, etc. It would be nice, for example, the asteroid in Classics Asteroids, when it's moving, you get a kind of rocket tail, which is basically just two lines. But if I had two drawables, that would be so much easier to implement. And it's a bit dodgy the way the drawable component is very heavily dependent on the physics component, because in this case, the physics component defines where the lines are. So... It's a bit, it's a bit, it's not brilliant, but it's a good learning experience. So anyway, let's do some code now. I'm thinking, what can I do here? And there's a really obvious one. If I uncomment this, so we can collide with asteroids, and um, it's just using rough circular for colli uh, circular collision at the moment, I will do some more accurate line collision. And I will not do that with my hands, but nothing, nothing going on. I'm wearing a dressing gown, but nothing going on. Um, you know what? No. I'm going to make it so asteroids do not spawn in the middle where the ship does because that kind of sucks if we die instantly as we do because the random number that's generated for the asteroid position is always the same because I'm not seeding it. Yes, I probably should be, but for now I don't care. I'm just hacking stuff together a little bit. So we need to go to the asteroid generation code and that I think will be an asteroid physical .cpp. Um, Where's position? Yes, here we go. Position random. Now, what we're going to do is we're simply going to test if this is near to the center of the screen. And as I say that, I'm trying to think of this. Is the center of the screen where I think it is? Yes, because I moved the camera. The center of the screen in this case is zero, zero. So, all we're going to do is if m underscore position dot x is less than 100 and m underscore position dot x is greater than minus 100 so if it's roughly near the center of the screen on the x-axis and it is roughly what am i doing all right fine and it is roughly near the center on the y-axis then we can do some magic we want to move it and at the moment i will make this movement random but again i'm just going for quick and easy solutions at the moment so if that is true Mm, oh, wait a minute. Um, it's opposite on y-axis, isn't it? If it No, if it's less than 100, greater than minus... No, that'll work, sorry. Then we want to offset the x position by 200. That'll work. So all I've done there is say, if the asteroid's too near the middle, move it to the right so the ship doesn't die at the start. So let's see if we die at the start. It'll be a good test. No, we don't. See, that asteroid's got moved over there. It was spawning to the left here, but now it isn't. And now we can see our collision in action. Huzzah! And it disappears. Excellent. So it's detecting the collision and removing it. Now, it's very vague. Remember, it's actually just drawing a circle around these asteroids. It's drawing a circle around the ship. Okay, so for those who don't know circular collision, draw two circles, one around each object. So if my hands are two objects, they're roughly circular in shape you know the radius of these circles. So for any circle, because they are circles, it doesn't work for ovals, although you can modify it. Um, we know that the minimum distance these have to be to collide, it must be less than or equal to this radius plus this radius. I'm, I'm drawing my fingers on the wrong side of my hand, sorry. This radius plus this radius. So if we calculate the distance between them and it's less than the sum of those radiuses, we have a collision and then what you would do is more precise collision because you don't want to do a really detailed collision check so you just do circular collision for all the objects. For ones that are true you then go and compare line segments intersecting which is a lot more expensive and I've not implemented it here because I don't keep the maps in my head. I just google it. It's what everyone else does um, within reason anyway. Apart from my boss he's kind of magic with that stuff. Hmm. So let's see, what else would be a good step to implement? Well, our ship's dead, so respawning would be quite nice, but I don't really know if I want to do that yet. 
I'm trying to think, I haven't actually given any thought before this video what I want to code, and I'm going to give myself 15 minutes, and we've got to make something. Um, hmm. Well, there's a lot of tidying up work to do, but that's not that interesting. Like, for, alright, something that annoys me. Apparently, <clears throat> um, in C++, if you have a structure like an unordered map, so imagine a hash table, if you try and query for a key, and it's not in the table, it doesn't return null. I expected it to return null. It actually returns a bad allocation exception, which makes sense if you know how the structure works, but it's kind of annoying because it meant I had to do this. But regardless, um, I think we're not going to test for collision here. That's really bad. What we want to do... Do I want to do event-based? I could. See, what I'm thinking, I'm trying to keep the scene objects as, like, disconnected as possible. So what I don't want is I don't want, in my player ship, to need a list of asteroids and do stuff like that. Although, technically, that's similar to what I'm doing here, but not quite. So instead, I think what I want to do is when any object in the game collides with another object, instead of either of those objects taking an action... They're going to fire an event. We're going to build an event system, yes. So, if the ship collides with an asteroid, the ship is going to send an event that says, I've collided, it'll have a reference to the ship, a reference to the asteroid. What happens? Now, of course, what happens, some other part of the code can handle. I don't care yet. And if I remember... Is it? Give me a second, I need to look for a book. I think it's... Yes! No. Damn it, that's the wrong book. I have... Whoa. I've got too many books, I'm sorry. Um, where's another book? I know I've got this book. Give me one minute. I will find it, I promise. Or not. See, I'm such a... Wait a minute. That's it. That's, 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 yes! There it is! Get out of the way. Hawking. Okay. If you want to know more about game design patterns, I recommend this book. You can actually read it for free online, I think, but I really... Well, I thought it was so good, I decided to buy it. I was feeling rich. I'm not rich. Um, it's Game Programming Patterns by Robert Nistrom. Uh -huh. And it basically gives you examples on all of... Basically everything you want. It's got most of the Gang of Four patterns. In fact, it's got all of them. What book wouldn't for design patterns? And the one I want is Observer, which is one of the most used ones, but of course, I code in JavaScript. In JavaScript, we don't care about design patterns, we just care that the code works at the end of the day. Well, when you're on a development team size one, yeah, I don't need to worry about documentation and tests and all that stuff that I probably should do. I know like a thousand people in the comments are going to destroy me for that, but it doesn't matter. So anyway... Design one to one manage row. Yes, see, I can't remember the basics of this because I'm so sleep. We need an observer class that wants to know. We'll start with the nosy class that wants to know an object. No, we don't. Sorry, we want the subject class. Why is it doing this backwards? It's a while since I've done this. I do apologize for this tardiness. No, we're not doing that. We'll do it later. It's too complicated to do in the 10 minutes that I've got, I'm afraid. Sorry. Maybe in the next video. Oh, God. We need to decide what to do. What can we do, people? I should have thought about this. I really should have thought about this. I can make it go faster. But that's not really fun. Actually, we need different size asteroids. We don't have that yet. We've got part of it. And actually, let's have more asteroids because more's got to be better. This will be a good performance test as well. Whoa. Okay. Actually, I'm going to make it big. Oh, look at the pixelated. Whoops. Oh, yeah, I forgot collisions on. Oh, that's harsh. Collision in that world. Can I avoid it? I need, I need more I need more space. Do, 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 do. Oh, if you're wondering how everything's glowing, all the lines, I forgot to mention that. That was one of the things I wanted to try and replicate in the first place. Oh, no, no, it's going to count as... Look, this will be a collision. Oh, wow, that's actually pretty good for circular collision. I'm surprised. No, I'm not surprised because I made the radius of the, the circle the farthest point from the center, so unless you actually go closer than one of the points, you won't collide with it. 
Anyway, yes, different size asteroids. And low. I'm getting distracted. Um, We have somewhere in here. God, this has been a very disjointed video. I do apologize. Next time I will plan. I need to plan. Here we go. We've got some shaders now. Shaders, I can't go into. They're quite a big topic. But basically, imagine you can program part of the graphics card to do stuff with what you send it. So if you send an image um, in the vertex shader, you could program where the edges of this image actually are. You could twist it and distort it in all sorts of weird and wonderful ways. But more interesting for this is in the fragment shader, you can apply blur effects or whatever you want. So these functions, or this function, this main function here, runs on every single pixel of the texture I send it. So I draw my lines to a texture. They're just pure white, nothing else, just white lines. And then what this does is it says, okay, get this pixel. And then it checks the nearby pixels on the texture. And if one of them's white, which means one of it's a line, it adds some color to this pixel. So essentially we're creating a blur by looking at every single pixel and if it's close to the white line, it'll be quite bright. If it's further away, it gets darker. As you can see by these times 0.1, it gets slower as it goes down. Um, slightly misleading, there should really be a gap here. But anyway, and we run this three times. I think I'm running it three times over the whole texture, which not that efficient. I probably should have um, used a bloom shader or something, which is similar to this, but you lower the resolution first and some magic happens. It's great. But anyway, um, you can steal this shader actually if you want. I might put it online or you can just look at it here It's right there. It's a very very simple shader just for every pixel checks if there's another pixel of color near it If there is add color to our pixel and eventually you end up with a glow effect And yes, I'm thinking of making lightsabers because it glows. It looks like lightsabers Right anyway, let's do some tidying up because I've done no coding yet and I've only got eight minutes left so the first thing we're gonna do is go to asteroid physical and here you'll see my constructor takes in the renderer, which I need for now, uh, the size of the asteroid and the number of children. The number of children shouldn't be there because, uh, well, that's dependent on the size. In typical asteroids, you have three sides. You have the big one, which breaks up into three bits. I think each of those bits break up into two and then the small ones, which just disappear. So really, if we know the size, we don't need to pass in the number of children. I think I was just being overly cautious. So I'm going to go and remove that. Yes, yes, we know. God, it's too hot. So, okay. Actually, should we just do that? That makes sense. Yes. Let's just do this. So I'm going to put it in my switch statement. Mnum children. Wow, my knowledge of C++ is bad today. Oh my god, have I really forgotten that? It's cool. C++ ignores empty space, we're fine, and I think it ignores new lines for the most part. So, mnum children equals um, make a large ride. We have three. Here we have two. Yeah, I'm honestly not kidding. I've used C++ so little recently. I'm not sure if it's going to get that semicolon and go to the next line. I don't think it is. My suspicion is it will just run this. I think I'm being paranoid and crazy. Mnum children equals zero. So, personally, I'm not actually sure if watching someone else code is entertaining, but some of you seem to like it, so I'll just do that. I, again, I don't want to make this a how-to video. If you were going to make a how-to video, you would code it the way I did um, in Eclipse in Java because it's a lot simpler having your ship class, your asteroid class, um, your static list of asteroids inside your asteroid class, which is a bit dodgy, but it's all good. Whereas here, we're dealing with components that are replaceable in inheritance and some templates in some places, so it's a bit too complicated. And to be honest, I've got no idea what I'm doing. I'm just winging it. But it's fun. Build a solution. It's going to crash because, yes, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, we don't need this parameter anymore. Ooh, that's what we need. We need a factory. At the moment, in the top of my main function, I've just got all this create player ship, create asteroid. These should really be in some kind of object factory. And to be honest, I'm not going to bother with a memory pool or something complex like that because with so few objects, I don't care that memory allocation is slow. You know, it's quick enough for this. I mean, we're just making asteroids here. So, yeah, I might just copy and paste that and put it in a factory. I'll do that now. Go on. 
Um, header files, new item. Factory.h. I don't know why, but when I'm explaining stuff and doing stuff like this, I have to look at the keyboard to type. It makes no sense. I can touch type at about 100 words per minute, but um, when I'm talking and trying to look at the camera and do all this, it just goes to crap. I just can't do it. If and f. Um, fa Did I really just call this file factor? Factor.h. God, that's going to annoy me later on. But what are you going to do? going to be awesome. Um, okay, so what does a factory need? I've not even made one of these in a while. You know what? For now, we're not going to have any private functions. We'll just go with public functions and it's just going to be create an asteroid, create um, void, create. In fact, basically, yeah, we're just going to copy and paste these. Um, create player ship and create asteroid. Excellent. So, not void. Um, yes, it doesn't know what any of those are. Don't worry about that. We can deal with that. In fact, I'll just show you a quick trick here for those who are new to C++. Something you should always do that I'm guilty of not doing a lot. Do, 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 do. Um, if you're worried you're including too many files, like here, that's way too many include files, but they're only there because I haven't moved everything into the relevant class yet. And um, There's a trick you can do. If you only need a reference to a scene object in this case, this header file doesn't actually need to know what a scene object is. You can just do this. Um, it will accept that perfectly fine. And likewise with scene. Um, oops, sorry. Class scene. There we go. And class uh, renderer. Now you may think, what's the good of this? Because we're going to have to declare these, the proper ones. We'll have to include the files in the CPP file. But most cases, you only include header files. So if I need this factory in main, which I will in a minute, I will include factory.h, but that won't include everything in the CC, sorry, CPP file. One day I'm going to get that right. Damn CCP that made EVE Online. You screwed my life up when I heard your name. Okay, so we're going to go to source files. We're going to add a factory. Do -do -do -do. No, and we're going to call this one factory. So we've got factor.h and then we've got factory. Oh, is my Y key broken? Did I just do that again? Have I been doing something with factors in recently? I've been doing a lot of encryption. Maybe it's that. Anyway, hash include factor.h. That's terrible. And then we need to hash include scene.h. Hash include renderer.h. We might not even need to include these. You know what? I'm not... Go on, I'll include them for the moment, but I don't think we need to. Why is that? Oh, God, I've, I've renamed all these classes wrong. Render. Okay, so we just copy our two functions, and we add a semicolon there. I'm not sure if we need to include these, because even in here, we only have a reference. We might get an error related to having incomplete types. So I've not included the scene object itself yet. Let's see what it does. Let's see if it works. Oh, wait, of course it's not going to work. I am a silly billy. Factory. Factory belongs to that class. Very good. And let's just copy and paste this stuff. It's all going to work brilliantly. Factory. Is this correct player ship? No. Oh, my God. Um, I'll worry about that in a minute. Let's copy the other one as well. Get more red on the screen. Yeah, it doesn't know what all these things are. So really, this needs everything that's in main. Okay, fine. Scene asteroid. Eh. We can probably get rid of most of... Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Hash include factor.h. Let's move these into here. In fact, I'm wrong because of exactly why I just told you they won't get included in here. Ah, I'll worry about it in a minute. We're all cool. We're all friends here, right? Okay, so this works. We've simply moved it into there. Excellent. So we get rid of all this crap that we don't need. And yes, we need scene. 
Um, it doesn't know what those are, that's fine. Pointer to incomplete type is not allowed. I've got... That's not incomplete anymore. What are you talking about? I imported scene. That is... My scene is a scene, isn't it? Bye, that looks right. Ah, maybe it doesn't know what... Oh, does it really want... No, it doesn't want that. It's lying to me. Whoa. Okay, I'm not sure about that one. Maybe it does want scene object, but we've got scene, and scene's got scene object in, surely. Oh. No, it doesn't. Pre-declared it. Uh, so in this case, it's not actually helping me out that much, but still, it's good practice to only include things when you absolutely have to. In fact, we won't need scene object in here once I move everything into the scene itself. We shouldn't have to deal with the scene objects out here. So, obviously these functions are now invalid, so instead we've got renderer, we also create factory, my factory, and that's just using default constructor, so we don't even need that. Then we just do my factory dot create player ship, my factory dot create asteroid, and look, we've got a nice main file with none of that crap at the top defining things. Now, obviously, that's not actually implementing anything new. When I run this program, it'll still look exactly like it did before. Um, ooh, um, I'm just going to remove the asteroid count back to 5. Although, first, we've got to put it at 500. We've got to see what it does. Dun, 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 dun. That actually doesn't look that different. 5,000! Dulu. Dulu. Okay, that's getting crazy. It's still running at the same frame rate though. This is locked to 40 frames a second. It will go down to 20 if you're on a slow computer, but I mean, okay, it was fine with 5,000 asteroids. Let's try 10,000. Ah! It's still fine, it was still fine. That's actually a really cool effect, I like that. Awesome. Oh wait, wait, we've got to do that and maximize it. Whoa. That screensaver would hurt your eyes, and I'm God knows what this is going to look like on the recording, actually. I don't know. I think it might just turn into a blurred mass of white and blue, but that actually looks really cool. I think if you had bigger asteroids, and slightly fewer of them there, that could be a cool screensaver. Anyway, I'll put it back to five and just build it. So we've not implemented anything new yet. I will implement the invent system at some point. I'll either do it... Christ, I don't know. I'll do it sometime. And then I'll talk you through what I actually did, or I'll do it live if I think about it. But it's not one of those things I can just go and hack. If I do, it'll end up really messy and really bad. So I think this video is over half an hour, so sorry I haven't done that much. I've just showed you what I've been up to, really. And, oh, one other thing. Look at this. This is called I Had Too Much Money Again, which I don't, and I wanted to spend it. Um, I'm quite a fan of historical weapons, and I've already had multiple bows, I did archery quite a lot as a kid, but now this is the new hobby, swords. I've got nowhere to practice, I don't like the idea of fencing because they're too not historically accurate enough, uh, there's no HEMA schools where I am, but this is a Tinker Pierce longsword, and it's pretty awesome, I quite like it. It's not a wall hanger, it's not made of stainless steel, it's high carbon steel, and it's awesome, and I'm surprised how similar some of the techniques are to a katana. I think the main difference... I find is cross guard here allows you to do lots of cool binds and stuff, which is pretty awesome. No, I've not been practicing with other people with a live blade. I'm not that insane. Uh, let's just put that there. Anyway, yeah, cool sword. There was some other stuff I was going to say, but I can't remember what it is, and this video is too long now, so hopefully you've enjoyed me updating what I've been doing a little bit. If not, I'm sorry. I'll try and make the next video more interesting, though. Before I do the next Asteroid one, we might have a video on what I've been programming for the last six months, because at least that's a complete game that I can show you. So, thanks for watching, guys, and see you later. I need to go to bed.